So, we'll move on to the next slide. The most important thing is money. Nothing moves with money without money. So, Alhamdulillah, as you know, it's a, it's a two million pound build for the building itself. Two and a half million in total for the project. We have raised 1.2 million to date, Alhamdulillah. It's no small feat, so well done to all of you, mashallah. And if we go back a slide, um, in terms of expenditure, you can see on the right here that seven, almost 700,000 has gone into construction to this point. Alhamdulillah. And the rest is on all the various other fees, sort of architecture, reports, uh, consultants, and um, fundraising costs, legal costs, even utilities that we have to put in place. So all of that is um, installed. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So today's target is, you know, two million. I don't know who wrote 200,000. Such an ambitious bunch. We should, be, we should be looking for two million today, inshallah, from this group, inshallah. <laughs> I think um, if we move on to the next slide, there's a nice, beautiful quote here. Rasulullah sallallahu said, the earth on the day of resurrection will be scorching, except for the shadow of a believer, for verily his charity will serve him as shade. So that one pound you give, that two pound you give, that 200,000 you give, it all has a wider, a more deeper impact than just the children here, and just the, the community advancing here. It also creates a spiritual reward for you in the afterlife, inshallah. And I think, you know, I'm not going to go on too much because we have a beautiful picture of Brother Rahim. And I could go on and on, but you've got the gist. So get behind this project again, inshallah, and donate. Jazakallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Dearie me. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, thank you very much. And what I was really pleased to hear um, about this project, and it's something that I've seen in the most successful models of projects like this, and whether that be here in the UK or abroad as well. I saw a fantastic project recently in Canada, is that the project is aimed to be self-funding once it's set up that within the community centre there will be spaces that can generate income and this is so so important not only is it important from the logical point of view that we don't have to keep coming back to the community and asking you generously to keep funding it but it's actually the way of our ancestors it is the way of the Prophet Muhammad and the first generations they would set up we call it a not-for-profit they called it a waqf whereby a waqf would generate income that would allow charitable projects or community projects to be self-sustaining, that they could keep serving people for generation after generation because of the initial investment made by the early visionaries like yourselves who saw the potential of a project like this, put their money in and it then became self-funding. So I'm so pleased to hear that Imran, and thank you so much for that update. As we've said, look, you know, community relations are so, so important, arguably never, ever more important than they are now. And we're so grateful that we have the support here of our local community, of many of the councillors, of the politicians, and of course the mayor who is with us today. So I would like to ask him to join us now, please, if the mayor, if you give a very warm welcome to our mayor, Peter Taylor. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, many people in this room, the last time I saw them was at the event which Zahid mentioned on Friday in the Peace Gardens, um, where people of all faiths and none from our town gathered together to remember uh, the 51 people who sadly died in Christchurch, those who were injured and people who suffer religious persecution um, across the world. It's been mentioned a few times that Watford is a very, very diverse town but we're also incredibly cohesive. People of different faiths and of no faith come together um, incredibly well. And one of the things that's often, I've had a, not often, but a few emails from people who say, the Muslim Youth Centre, that's going to truly divide our town. And my answer is always, it definitely won't divide our town. It'll actually bring our town together. It will unite 
our town much, much more, than it, more united than it's ever been. And the reason I say that is my background was actually in Catholic education. I was the assistant director of the Catholic Education Service. There are 2,200 2, Catholic schools in England and Wales. And all the research shows that actually the most cohesive societies are those societies where people with a faith know their faith really well. They know their faith, they know their heritage, they're proud, they're confident, and they're then able to engage in society. And I think this Muslim Youth Centre is actually going to help bring our town together because it will mean that young people of a Muslim faith will have a better understanding of their faith, will be more able to achieve success at school, will be confident, will be keen to be part of society. And as a result, it will bring our town, which is already a very cohesive town, it will bring it even more together. So I support this project 100%. I was here uh, a year ago as the deputy mayor and a candidate to be the, the mayor, and Dorothy Thornhill, my predecessor, um, spoke to you about the council being 100% in support of this project and the council remains 100% supportive of this project. We provided the land for the Muslim Youth Centre to be built, we've provided funding, uh, match funding already, we've provided a loan of uh, £150,000 and we remain committed that once this project is completed that loan will turn into a grant and it will not need to be repaid because we want this to succeed and we're prepared to provide land and funding to help out. So I just want to pay tribute to the volunteers, to Imran, to Zahid, to everyone that's been involved with it. I wish you well. I did get to visit the site myself a few weeks ago, and my recollection from visiting the site was first it was absolutely freezing, but the other thing was that it was an incredibly large site, and to see the structure being built, to see the progress being made was really encouraging. And so I hope, God willing, in a year's time we will have this centre up and running, serving our town, serving our Muslim community and serving people of all faiths and none. And I hope that tonight's a big step forward in achieving that dream. Thanks very much. Thank you very much to the Mayor. And I think something I know as a, as a public speaker, I hope you don't mind me saying this, is that an audience always senses when someone means what they say. And it's very clear that you really believe in this centre and your support is invaluable and we really thank you for that. Um, you've seen that the, the trustees, are, many of them are quite young and of course we're building this centre really with the future of our youth in mind. But of course it is always on the shoulders of our elders that we benefit and that we stand. And it is without their support we really wouldn't have anything at all. So speaking of which, it gives me great pleasure to invite one of our senior community members to the stage, a supporter of this project. So please give a very warm welcome to Lord Qurban. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jessa, ladies and gentlemen, children, assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to you all. It gives me a great pleasure to be here today supporting a very worthwhile project, investing in our youth. I think we couldn't do more for our community if we don't invest in our youth. Youth are our future. And a country like this, Britain, which is a multicultural, multi-faith uh, country, multi-religion. And we are proud of that. We are proud to be Muslims, we're proud to be Christians, we're proud to be Muslims. And we have, we are, to, we are together. And I think what we need to teach our children is to remain together and reject anybody who wants to break our unity. We were together, we are together, and we will remain together forever. This is our country, this is our town, and we are proud of that. And youth needs to be on the right track so that they're not pulled into any extreme, whether it's right or left, whether it is anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, 
or anti-racial or whatever. These are all divisions and we need to teach our children just as we have fought our lives fighting against these extremes, our children need to do the same. That we are together, we are not going to allow any forces of evil who want to divide us as we have seen signs all over the world and as has been mentioned lately, uh, our prayers and thoughts for those who lost their lives in New Zealand and many other parts of the world. And the hatred that is coming up uh, aftermath of that in 